Welcome guys to my channel. Today what I'm talking about is actually some of the most notable players who have played for KW United, which is my hometown team. I didn't really go to KW United games back in the day. I went to one game actually. I got a free ticket to a game, but I was pretty young back then. Now I'm a little bit more interested in the team now that it's defunct, which is kind of weird. So the first one is Ken Krolicki. He's a central midfielder who's currently playing for Montreal Impact. Uh, he was drafted, I believe, in the second round of the 2018 MLS Super Draft, which kind of surprises me that he got the chance to play in the first team because a lot of the time, if you uh, get drafted in the second round nowadays, you often get signed to the USL team. So, for example, if you're drafted to Seattle Sounders in the second round, you often get signed to Seattle Sounders too, and then they'll see if you play actually well in USL, and then they'll call you up to the first team. But actually, Montreal uh, got rid of their USL team a few years ago Go. so they only have Montreal Impact and they ended up signing him to the first team for Montreal Impact um, and he's made 25 appearances for them he hasn't gotten a goal or an assist I find he seems to be a little bit more on the defensive side of things when I've watched him play for Montreal Impact as a Toronto FC fan I find he's a little bit of a dirty player at least in the few games that I've watched him play maybe he isn't actually that much of a dirty player but that's what I've gotten from watching him play. Uh, he actually played quite well for KW United back in the day. He scored 7 goals in 25 appearances. He played quite well for KW United uh, while he was in college because a lot of the time these players, they'll play for their college team and then when they have time off, they'll be able to play for the PDL team, which is really the whole way that the PDL works and the way that all these teams work. That's just a rough idea around it. Now for the second player, it's Kamal Miller. Now I, I haven't watched Kamal Miller play, although he's currently playing in MLS. He's made nine appearances for Orlando City. Uh, he's a defender for them. He played for KW United in two years uh, while at Syracuse, and he has made one appearance for the Canadian national team and a pretty good game to make your debut as he came on in the 60th minute or so against Cuba in this past World Cup where Canada won 7-0. So that's a pretty nice day to make your debut for the Canadian national team. For the third player, we've got a goalkeeper in Dane St. Clair. Now I haven't watched Dane St. Clair play, but I was watching the MLS Super Draft uh, when it was happening this year. He was drafted 7th overall in the 2019 MLS Super Draft to Minnesota United. He's currently on loan in the USL League One side forward Madison FC where he's made I believe four appearances for the team. He was one of the top prospects in the draft. He was picked seventh overall as a goalkeeper uh, for Minnesota United. Currently Minnesota United has two players I believe in front of him. They have Victor Manone who's on a 12 month a, really a year-long loan at Minnesota United from Sunderland. He takes up an international spot and he takes up TAM money which is two things that you don't want normally a goalkeeper to take up in an MLS squad because a lot of the time you like to spend your TAM on attackers or midfielders. Sometimes you like to spend it on a defender to shore up your defense. We've seen that with Toronto FC this year with Laurent Simon and Omar Gonzalez but uh, and you also don't want to use an international spot because there's lots of decent American goalkeepers around there But I could well see him being a starting goalkeeper for them competing with Bobby Shuttleworth because I don't think they'll extend the loan For Manone as he takes up Tim and an international spot when they have Bobby Shuttleworth I believe still at the team who's been a starting goalkeeper for them and they have Dane St. Clair Who's a young up-and-coming goalkeeper Dane St. Clair could also become a starting goalkeeper in the future for the Canadian national team. Now we've got another goalkeeper in Nathan Ingham. Nathan Ingham currently plays for York Dine FC in the Canadian Premier League. In my opinion, I've watched him play a few games and I think he's the best goalkeeper in the league. He's made by far the most saves in the league for York Dine FC. Uh, he saved them for a few games. He's also cost them one result in a crucial result against Montreal Impact where he tripped the player with his hands. He just came way out and knocked this one Montreal Impact player down so that they got a penalty and tied up the game which eventually led to Montreal advancing into the next round of the Canadian Championship which was not good for York 9 FC because they didn't advance then and they could have beat Montreal Impact 
it was like in the final minute of the game in Montreal, Impact tied it up because of that mistake. But overall, he is uh, quite a good goalkeeper for York 9 FC. He's arguably the best goalkeeper in the league, and I could see him well being a uh, starting goalkeeper for the Canadian national team in the future uh, because Milan Borian is getting a bit older, and perhaps they might not value Maxime Cripo later on because Vancouver is not doing as great this season. I, I see a good future for him uh, and he's one of the best players who's played for KW United, at least in the goalkeeping position. Now we've got Julian Boucher. Now Julian Boucher's a little bit of a journeyman since his career started off. He's 26 years old I believe right now. Uh, he played for KW United while in college and was later drafted 11th overall in the 2016 MLS Super Draft by DC United. DC United had him playing there for two years. They loaned him to Rochester Rhinos for part of the season for, for a bit of it, but he made 27 MLS appearances for DC United, which is pretty good, until he was released at the end of the 2017 season. Then he went on to play for LA Galaxy 2, Probably didn't want to play for them for too long, but he did play for them in USL Championship, which is what it's now called uh, at the time. It was just called USL. He ended up moving on to Cavalry FC, where he currently plays. Uh, Julian Boucher is arguably, at least according to Kurt Larson, who's the managing editor, editor at the Canadian Premier League, he's one of the best central midfielders in the league. He's got a good defensive capabilities. I haven't watched him too much, but I've heard a lot of good things about him. Now we've got Jordan Morrell, who currently plays for Valor FC. I believe he's co-captains with another player. I don't think he will be captain for too much longer because he kind of acted up in a recent game versus Halifax where he went up. He got red carded in a game for talking back to the ref or something like that. And then he got so angry for getting a red card. You could, I'll try and find the video to show it in this uh, video. But he goes up to this guy who's just like sitting down right beside the exit and just smashes, like he just kicks this guy's uh, table like up. He just got so angry, he just kicks this guy's table. And the guy got so like, scared when he did it because he wasn't expecting this guy to like rage on him because this guy didn't do anything to him um, but yeah I don't think he's gonna be captain for too long when he's acting up like that but anyway he's a fullback for Valor FC uh, well he was originally drafted drafted 57th overall by Real Salt Lake uh, in the 2015 MLS Super Draft he's 26 years old right now he was actually drafted by Real Salt Lake but they signed him to his USL team which is a common thing that MLS teams do now. If they have a USL team, which is like their second team that they own, uh, then they'll just sign players who are drafted lower in the draft uh, to their USL team, see if they can prove their worth, and then they'll sign them to the MLS team. I guess he didn't prove his worth enough at the Real Salt Lake organization. He was playing at Real Monarchs, their USL team, so they ended up releasing him after just one year. And then he went on to play for uh, Pittsburgh Riverhounds who he played for one year and then he moved on to Renault 1868 where he played there for two seasons until eventually moving on to Valor FC. Now I'm going to talk about Sergio Camargo. I haven't really watched him play much or anything like that. Uh, I have watched him a little bit with Cavalry FC. He seems to have good attacking capabilities, can play right all over the central midfield, uh, you know, can play different types of roles. Uh, but as I said, he currently plays for Cavalry FC. He had a good time when he was playing for KW United. He scored 13 goals in 17 games while in college, of course. He scored 5 goals in 13 games so far for Cavalry FC. He was signed by Toronto FC in his first pro contract in 2017. Then Toronto FC just loaned him to uh, TFC2 and then released him at the end of the season, which is kind of weird that they would only give him one season to prove himself. Then he moved on to play for Calgary Foothills, where Tommy Wielden Jr. was the manager. Tommy Wielden Jr., of course, he was managing that team at 2018. They won the PDL championship. And then Tommy Wielden Jr. moved on to become the Cavalry FC manager. Probably knew uh, how good Sergio Camargo's talent was and ended up signing him to Cavalry FC so that he could become a professional player again. It was kind of interesting with how he signed up for Toronto FC, I remember, because I think he was going to enter the Super Draft, but then he opted out to sign with Toronto FC 
because he had previously been in the academy for Toronto FC which meant that they had the rights to him so that they could sign him instead of him going through the draft and going to a team that he doesn't know. So he was able to go to a team that was familiar to him, but unfortunately for him he only lasted there for a year. He didn't make an MLS appearance for them. Now this guy, Jay Chapman, is probably the most notable player on this list. He currently plays for Toronto FC. He's made 79 appearances for them. He's 25 or 26 years old right now. Uh, and he played for KW United quite a few years ago. He's got six goals and five assists with Toronto FC in his 79 MLS appearances. He was originally signed by Toronto FC 2 in 2013, and then he signed up to a professional, well, then they signed him to a first team contract in 2015, where he's made many appearances, a lot of them off the bench since then. To be honest, to be uh, fair about how he's played, he's often a little bit inconsistent. Like some games he'll have a really good game and he'll be making a lot of good passes in the central midfield as he's a central midfielder. He seems to veer on the attacking side of play like he's a, he seems a little bit, he, he seems to be a little bit like a deep line playmaker, but he doesn't do a lot of tackles. He makes a lot of good passes though. I've heard a lot of people are fans of him. Sometimes he has really good games, sometimes he doesn't have that great games. Uh, so he's a little bit inconsistent there, but he's certainly one of the top notch players on this list. And I do enjoy watching him play a lot of the time. Now we've got the last player that I'm gonna talk about. Now this is Nicky Budelich. He's currently in his 40s. He's not a soccer player right now. Actually, KW United was his last soccer team that he played for. He's played for teams in the USL A League, the Canadian Soccer League, which don't confuse that with the Canadian Premier League. Canadian Soccer League's like pretty much only in Ontario. It's not the same as the Canadian Premier League. And he's also played for a team in Norway and in Sweden. He only made two appearances for KW United as his last club and he ended up moving on to become, uh, he's currently the director of soccer operations for Inter Miami CF who is going to be in MLS next season. It's kind of neat to see that Nicky Budulic, you know, he was playing a few games for KW United and then he became such a well-known person, at least in MLS. Uh, you know, he's not the most well-known person, but among uh, people who are fo following the Inter Miami expansion, they probably know him. Uh, he actually also was, uh, he also was in a high up position for Orlando too. I believe he was one of their uh, directors of football there too, but he didn't have the greatest time there as of course we all know that Orlando is not one of the best teams in MLS at the moment. Anyway, as I mentioned at the start of this video, I was going to list all the notable players for uh, who have played for KW United, at least who I believe are notable. If I missed any, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And also, if you have any suggestions for any other PDL teams I should look at for players that they've produced or any suggestions for any other videos, please leave that in the comments down below. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to see more content about Canadian soccer, about US soccer, about MLS, USL, the Canadian Premier League. Thank you for watching this video. See ya.